Hey there everybody, Gene Select here, coming at you with a tier list. Now tier lists, I don't know if they're still popular, but I noticed there was not a tier list for great painters, which frankly I think is ridiculous, uh, because I think if people want to know who the greatest painters are, uh, it, they can come to something like this to uh, be able to have a reliable source to know who is really the greatest of all time. Now we'll get right into it. I have a bunch of painters down here. We're going to put them in the list. Clearly here we have the actual tiers. Double S being just the greatest painters of all time. Uh, these ones down here, I don't know what these guys are doing, who's in here. I mean, it, I guess they're great, but uh, they don't really compare to anybody who's actually uh, on one of the letter lists. And then there are some people I think who get a lot more credit than they should. And so they're going to be going down here in the shite tier. So uh, for our first one here we have Francis Bacon. Now Francis Bacon, pretty strange guy, weird guy in real life too, um, but he makes some great stuff. I've actually seen some in real life and uh, it's quite breathtaking. He's done a lot of things. They're all very different. He's a very recognizable style. So he's going to go right here in A. A tier, sort of in the middle, pretty good way to start out. I like Francis Bacon a lot, but uh, he doesn't quite compare to the true mastery of some of the people above, uh, but it would be not doing him justice to, oh look, I've switched up. There we go, A tier. Thank goodness, all right. So next one here we have Banksy. And so I wanna just say that I did my best to find pictures uh, or self portraits rather of all of the uh, artists we have uh, in question, but of course nobody knows what Banksy looks like. So I just picked uh, one of these guys here. So Banksy, probably the most modern, like, uh, as in still alive of any of these artists here uh, and he's really popular so we're going to put him uh, actually down in shite tier because if you like Banksy uh, get out he sucks he's going down in shite tier uh, he's just he's a glorified vandal as far as I'm concerned um, no questions asked next we have Basquiat now this this is what a street artist should be Basquiat, fantastic artist, very stylized, uh, great stuff. He's going in B tier because compared to someone like Francis Bacon, I wouldn't call him incredible, but you can recognize a Basquiat. Great style and a little out there, a little bit more out there even than uh, Mr. Bacon, uh, but still fantastic artist, significantly better than Banksy. Next we have Max Beckman. Uh, I really like Beckman, great guy, great artist, really cool work, uh, quite stylized, you can kind of tell where he goes, and he's going to go down there with Basquiat in B tier, fantastic artist. Uh, now we have Hieronymus Bosch, so he's definitely probably one of the older, old timey ones on the list here, uh, very recognizable style as well, more of a, a medieval uh, look about him. Uh, I think his most famous painting would probably be Garden of Earthly Delights, which I think is an incredible painting. He's going to go right there and be. Because uh, his technical level doesn't quite stand up to some of the people on top, but still absolutely uh, incredible artist. And next we have Botticelli. So we're getting into the Renaissance era. Uh, fantastic artist as well. I have seen uh, probably his most famous painting in real life. It's quite breathtaking. Uh, Birth of Venus. Incredible work. Uh, but he's only going to go down here and B because compared to some of his uh, uh, other people that came from his time, technically not the most advanced painter in the world, but uh, pretty pretty nice style. You can kind of tell a uh, Botticelli even more uh, apart than some of his other uh, people around that time, but still fantastic work. I know it's a lot of B here, but we're gonna we're gonna flush this out quite a bit. Um, so now we have Caravaggio. Uh, Baroque painter, incredible work. I've seen a couple of Caravaggios, none of particular note, but incredible painter. He's going to go up here in S, S tier. If you're Caravaggio, you're putting in work and you're doing a fantastic job. So good fucking job, Caravaggio. Next down here we have Paul Cezanne. So he's one of those painters, uh, super well known, and it's not that the stuff isn't good, but he's going to go down here in D tier. Uh, just because compared to some others like up here Cezanne's if you're a big Cezanne fan you might be able to pick one out of crowd but 
uh, it, it's not too unique in my mind. And then next we have Leonardo da Vinci. So um, obviously Mona Lisa, most famous painting of all time. Um, I'm pretty sure one of his works, Salvador Mundi, at the time of recording this video, is the highest uh, priced painting, I think, sold at private auction. Good job, uh, Leo. Uh, but he barely finished any paintings, and he's going to go down in C tier. So that one might be a bit controversial, but uh, frankly, as a painter, even though Mona Lisa is so well known, uh, he really doesn't stack up when talking about specifically painting. He was more of a uh, a jack of all trades. He did a lot of stuff. So if it was just by everything that they did, he'd probably be a lot higher. But this is for painting. Uh, next we have Dali. Super popular nowadays. Um, surrealism. Super, super out there. Very recognizable. He's going to go up in S tier. Uh, I think he's a little overhyped, so he's definitely not going in double S. But his work is still great. Very unique. And you can tell a Dali when you see it. And next we have one of my personal favorites. Jacques-Louis David, fantastic guy, uh, more of a neoclassical painter, painted for Napoleon, he's going in double S, fantastic stuff, his works were huge, incredibly detailed, uh, and absolutely fantastic work. Uh, next we have Degas, so Degas is another one of those, kind of like Cezanne, where it's kind of hard to tell a Degas from a Cezanne or uh, a Matisse or something like that, but he's going to go in C tier because uh, he was really known for ballerinas. He loved painting ballerinas. I don't know why, but that was just his thing. So if you see a ballerina painting, chances are it's probably Degas. Uh, he's going to go right here with Leo in uh, C tier. Next we have Gauguin. Um, interesting painter, very stylized. You can kind of tell a Gauguin when you see it. Uh, he was also a pretty crappy guy in real life, but I mean, we're not we're not judging. Uh, on this on this list here, uh, but he's going to go down in question mark here because he does some really weird crap. Uh, not a bad painter, but I think uh, that suits him quite well. The uh, little question mark here there. Afterwards, we have Goya, Francisco Goya, another Spanish painter. Uh, actually, this might be the first Spanish painter on the list. Um, very skilled, did a lot of cool stuff. He had a lot of good prints. I'm not going to try to take that into account too much because prints aren't really painting but they're they're kind of close but uh, he's gonna go up in S tier along with Dali fantastic but he doesn't quite compare to either of these guys up here at the top um, and next we have Kandinsky also quite stylized he loved color doing a lot of stuff with color I'm just gonna go down here in D tier because uh, he did a lot of really basic looking works kind of uh, the sort of thing where you look at it and you say I could have done that well, you didn't do that, but Kandinsky did. Uh, but at the same time, it's one of those things where right place, right time, you could have been Kandinsky. Maybe not exactly, but pretty close. And then I think next we have the only female on the list. We have Frida Kahlo. Uh, quite talented, very stylized, very popular, especially with uh, the lady painters, because she might be one of, if not the most popular, one of the most popular female painters out there. It's definitely uh, male heavy as far as that stuff goes. Uh, but she's going to go down here in B. Technically quite advanced, very stylized, uh, very, very primal, animalistic. As you can see, she's got a couple little, uh, couple little animals here in the back. Um, but I don't feel comfortable putting her any higher, uh, but she definitely does not deserve to be down any lower than B tier, that's for sure. Uh, afterwards, we have Gustav Klimt, fantastic painter. If you like gold, if you like blue, this guy is the guy for you. Incredibly talented, super recognizable work. He's going to go up here in double S. Fantastic painters. These three, fantastic painters. Uh, next, we have Manet. So Manet, another one of these, you know, trouble picking out in the crowd. Well, I think he's a little bit better than uh, our boy Cezanne down here, but he's going to go up here in C tier with Degas. They can be uh, they can be buddies. C tier is not even that bad. I mean, you have you have Leonardo uh, in here. So if you're in C tier, you shouldn't really be too, too concerned. Uh, next, we have Matisse. Another one of those ones. Tough to pick out. He's going down in D uh, with 
excuse me, Cezanne again. Now, we have another big name here, Michelangelo. Michelangelo, kind of similar to Leo, dabbled in a lot of different works, uh, but he did complete a lot more painting. Uh, now, he's going to go up here in A. Why am I not putting him in S or double S? Well, it's because this guy, he, he didn't respect painting very much. He was a sculptor first, a painter second. He believed that sculpting was the highest form of art. Uh, didn't take away from how skilled he was at painting, though. Uh, he did paint everybody like a man. If you've ever seen a woman painted by Michelangelo, it's just a man with uh, some breasts on there. Um, so, pretty recognizable stuff. I have seen uh, a lot of the Sistine Chapel ceiling pieces. Uh, quite breathtaking, of course once you've seen it in real life, but I don't think he deserves to be up here in like the top, top echelons uh, of this list here. Now we have Amadeo Modigliani. So also super recognizable style, a uh, bit of a basic, basic guy when it comes to techniques. But uh, if you ever see a painting with no actual eyeballs, just kind of empty sockets, uh, that's a Modigliani. He's going to go down here and see, only because I don't think technically he compares to a lot of these painters up here. Uh, even though he has quite a unique style, just not painting eyes, I don't think is enough to get you uh, up top. I think his his uh, methodology behind it was that uh, something about knowing a person's soul, and if he doesn't know uh, a person's soul, then he can't paint their eyes. Because I guess, you know, eyes, window into the soul, of course. Uh, that's, I think, I'm pretty sure it's a self-portrait, so I guess he doesn't really know himself that well either, because no eyeballs. Uh, next we have Claude Monet, super popular, Impressionism, uh, very notable. I haven't seen any Monets in real life. Actually, that's not true. I have seen a Monet. It wasn't a very notable one, but very beautiful and very talented as well. He's going to go up here in B only because still a very, very technical painter. Uh, he did a very good job, but I don't think the... The level of skill was up to par with some of these guys up here. Um, still incredible, probably the best, I'd say one of the best in in this tier. They're, they're not rated by who's the best in the tier, mostly just the different tiers uh, describe where they were. So uh, next we have Edward Munch. So known for the scream, uh, that's basically his only claim to fame. Super strange guy. I, he didn't like big open places, he liked staying at home. He's going to go down here in D tier. Uh, just because he didn't really do too much. Uh, it'd be really hard to pick out a munch uh, if you didn't know exactly what you were looking for, unless it was, of course, the scream. That's really the only thing keeping him out of uh, question mark or shite tier. Next we have uh, Pablo Picasso. Also super popular. Definitely one of the more modern ones. Uh, dead now, but alive recently. Uh, super stylized. You can definitely, well maybe pick out a Picasso only because his techniques I feel are uh, easy to replicate in certain 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 circumstances uh, but he's gonna go right here in A tier I consider him kinda like Bacon um, in that he really didn't necessarily focus on realism of any sort but more uh, alternative aspects so cubism of course was the thing he would be known for um, and an incredible painter plain and simple uh, next we have Jackson Pollock. So, um, if you accidentally sneeze, you might uh, make a Jackson Pollock. So, uh, he's going to go down here in question mark tier because, um, I mean, look, look, look at this. It's it's scribbles. That's a self portrait. If you can believe it. Um, so yeah, he's going to go down here with Gauguin in question mark tier. Next we got a big boy, Raphael. So Raphael, known for painting. Um, he was around the same time as our boy uh, Michelangelo. Didn't like each other very much, uh, but incredible stuff. I have seen the Raphael rooms in the Vatican. Incredible. Maybe not quite as breathtaking as the uh, Sistine Chapel ceiling, but still an incredible painter. He had a huge impact on uh, painting after him. A lot was based off of Raphael. He's going to go here in S tier uh, because he is a very formulaic painter. He really stuck to his guns and didn't paint really out of the box in that sense. But what he did do was absolutely incredible. Uh, now we have Rembrandt. So Rembrandt, another huge name, super talented portrait painter, uh, very dark backgrounds, very light faces. 
Uh, apparently he could whip out portraits in like absolutely no time. So clearly incredibly gifted painter as it was. He's going to go up in S tier along with Raphael. I'd consider them at a similar level as far as uh, actual painting prowess goes. Uh, after Rembrandt, we have Renoir. So Renoir is another one of those guys, pretty similar to the, the Degas, the Matisses. He's going to go here in C tier because he does have uh, some uh, recognizable stuff, but I wouldn't call him outstanding for his time period. Now we have the counterpart to Frida Kahlo, Diego Rivera, very known for uh, mural painting. Uh, but I think a lot of his fame was because uh, he was attached to this beautiful lady right here. Uh, so he's going to go in D tier. Still very talented, very talented, but I don't think he really brings brings the game like Frida does or uh, some of these guys up here. Uh, now we have a very special guy, Rothko. If you've ever seen a Rothko, you could definitely paint that. A lot of big canvases, uh, and I think that gives people the impression that somehow it must be better. Uh, but he's going down in shite tier with Banksy, uh, because he was known for the, the big paintings of single-tone blobs, for the most part. Absolutely garbage. Um, if you're a big fan of Rothko, uh, just like Banksy, I don't know what's worse. Honestly, probably Banksy, but not not taking it to a high level, that's for sure. Uh, next we have Peter Paul Rubens. Now Rubens is an absolutely incredible painter. Uh, I have seen one notable Rubens work. Uh, I believe it's called Massacre of the Innocents and it is quite breathtaking. It's very large. Uh, he even has a term, uh, Rubenesque which is used to describe women with particularly large bottoms. Um, he, was, he was very good at painting large people, men and women, uh, very fleshy, and did a great job in it. So he's going to go all the way up here in S tier. Good job, Rubens. Uh, next we have my personal favorite. He's only on this list. He's not that notable. He's only on this list because he's my favorite painter of all time. Egon Schiele. Super notable, noticeable style. Fantastic stuff. He did a lot of drawing, did a lot of painting. Uh, I'm a huge fan, but I'm not going to rank him up up here in double S just because I don't want to show my bias too much, but he's going in A. So I'm showing my bias a little bit, um, but he was around a similar time with uh, Beckman there. Um, not as much known for his color, but his uh, line drawing is absolutely incredible. So he's going up here in A. Next we have Surratt. So Surratt, I like to think of him as a knockoff Claude Monet. Uh, didn't paint the exact same um, subject matter, but very similar. Uh, I believe uh, it a lot, had a lot to do with color splotches as well. He's got some great stuff, but he's going to just go down here in C tier. Because I think between these two guys here, uh, he's definitely got to go a little bit lower down on the list. Uh, now we have Turner. So Turner does some cool stuff. I've seen some Turners. Um, very emotional work. Uh, great atmosphere to them. But he's going to go down here in D tier because uh, kind of like Rothko, a lot of his were just, a lot of his paintings were just a lot of just one tonal color. Very great for atmosphere. But like the actual subject of the painting was usually quite small. Uh, painted incredibly, but... Uh, compared to some of these guys, like if you look ahead of him, just you, you can't justify putting him any higher. Uh, now we might have the most popular guy on the list here, Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, Van Gogh, incredible painter, super stylized, uh, terrible in success in life, uh, but in death became one of the one of the most popular painters of all time. He's going to go down here in B tier. Now this might uh, this might anger some folks that he didn't get higher on the list. Um, but he painted in his style. It's incredible. Things like Starry Night, um, excellent work. He did a lot of sunflowers, uh, but even though it's very stylized and very recognizable, I don't want to put him any higher on 
this list here. Uh, next we have De Diego Velasquez, another Spanish painter. He's going to appear in A tier. He's kind of like Goya in skill level. Uh, he might actually even be slightly more skilled, but I feel like you can tell a Goya a lot more than you can a Velasquez, and being able to be recognized for your work um, is incredibly important in being a successful painter. So I'm going to put him down here in A tier, still an incredibly respectful tier, uh, but he's going to go down here in A. Uh, next we have a big heavy hitter, Vermeer. Maybe the greatest painter here. I think it's come to light that a lot of the uh, the Dutch masters there did a lot of cheating in some sort of projection mirror method or something where he could do incredibly detailed paintings. Um, and frankly, I don't even consider that cheating at all. Uh, just good job, good technique. It's still technique, um, which is, what's it called? Woman, woman with the pearl earring or something. Incredible painting. He's going up here in double S. He's, he's with the heavy hitters here. And lastly, we have John William Waterhouse. So that might not be a name people are super familiar with. Um, he's a pre-Raphaelite, which means that uh, he was part of a group that was dedicated to bring back painting techniques that were lost because of our boy Raphael here, uh, who had such a large impact over time that everybody just painted like Raphael. These guys were like, heh, I'm not going to paint like that guy. I'm going to do it the old way. He's going up here in double S because um, you got to have some some cojones to, uh, to say that Raphael had it wrong and you're going to do it how they did beforehand. Beautiful work, super detailed, great subject matter, um, and frankly, just a talented painter. He deserves to be up here in the double S. Uh, so this is our list here. I feel like it's quite balanced. B tier is a little bit heavy, but I think overall it seems like there's a pretty good uh, good splay here of work. Um, now you're of course welcome to your own opinions. Um, this is my opinion, but uh, if you don't agree with anything on my list, uh, you're probably just wrong. So don't worry about it. It's okay. It's all right to have your own opinion. I mean, you know, Egon Schiele probably doesn't deserve to be this high. That's probably the only one you can maybe. Um, argue with, but everything else pretty justified, I would say, for the most part. So, uh, thank you everybody for watching this tier list video. Um, hopefully, you learned a thing or two. Hopefully, your eyes have been opened. Feel free to check out some of these guys uh, on your own time. Of course, uh, the world of painting is a large one, and you know what? There are a lot of painters who definitely could have been on this list, uh, but I really stuck to some of the bigger names, I would say, that you might hear around. Um, so definitely all these painters incredibly respectful respectable frankly even even these guys like if you're on this list you you still are doing okay uh, even these guys even though uh they're trash all, all these guys here but uh it doesn't matter you know to each his own and otherwise thank you very much for watching like and subscribe and take care